Okay, very good morning again, and thank you for joining us. So we are going to study Perfect Redemption Plan 5, yes, uh, out of 7. We are ready in uh, Perfect Redemption Plan 5. So well done to everyone for making it through the, all those my weekly milk series and then the perfect redemption plan thus far. So without further ado, we are going to to have uh, to see our PDF. You have it in your phone. Your the, the PDFs. So that's uh, perfect redemption plan uh, five. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord is my physician, the Lord is my healer, uh, the Lord is my doctor. So that's what we are going to study. There are 24 uh, parts in uh, the recordings that are in the playlist. So we are going to take them uh, in chunks of four, 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 like we've been doing so that uh, we can actually go for it. We need to take our time. This is very important. I need to say and emphasize again, the House of Prayer for All Nation is not a ministry, it is a church. And in the church, there are uh, activities uh, that are sponsored by God. There are ministries uh, that are sponsored by Jesus and there are uh, gifts that are sponsored by the Holy Spirit. So that's what we have in a church. So the healing uh, crusade and the voices of a healing uh, ministries, uh, the TV ministry on uh, healing specifically, uh, that are part of the House of Prayer for All Nation as a church. So we don't just teach uh, on the healing uh we teach on everything that pertain to life uh, and uh, godliness so don't expect me on sunday to preach on healing all the time we don't only preach on prophecy don't expect me every sunday to come and prophesy no we teach everything that pertain to life uh, and uh, that pertains to life and the godliness so everything that uh, a person needs for the christian uh, life that's what we teach it just happened to be that uh, people are sick uh, and it is a big need in the body of christ so and that's also god commanded us when he sent all of us as you go preach uh repent for the kingdom of god is at hand or is within a reach and then do what he already said cast out devils and raise the dead so that's why we uh have a ministry of uh, healing within the church the house of prayer for all uh, nations and uh, yes so perfect redemption plan uh, five jehovah rafa the lord is our physician the lord is our healer and this is very very important and all of us need to uh, understand uh, uh, this uh, uh, Bible study. All the Bible, Bible studies, but this one is a crucial. The perfect redemption plan series, they are very crucial. But the foundation of all those things are the um, my weekly mail from the Bible studies come home. You should not understand what it means to be born again and things are not set in place in your life, uh, you are not going to be able to operate in the power and the promises that are uh, shared in this one. So revisit all the other Bible studies uh, uh, again and again. And as you read them, every time you read them and reread them, you have a better understanding. For the voice of healing as well, uh, as you listen to them or watch them, take down the notes, and uh, use them as a study materials as well though they are very uh, succinct and straight to the point 
expound in the name of Jesus. Now, number one is that the work of the devil. So uh, we already saw in part one of the perfect redemption plan, a dream of starting a family. And Satan was being envious of that plan because he was kicked out of heaven. And God now decided to make mankind the apple of his eye just a little lower than him in spiritual ranking, putting him in the God class according to Psalm 8, where he made him a little lower than Elohim, the Godhead. So Satan wanted to come and uh, out of uh, jealousy and hatred for God, a disgruntled uh, employee. He wanted to come and uh, destroy the dream of God. Uh, so he, by causing mankind also to rebel and betray God so that he will hurt uh, God and uh, forever send also mankind uh, with uh, Satan in hell. So that was the plan of Satan, as we explained. He only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So sickness, disease, all those atonements, actually the work of the devil and death itself are the works of the devil. Before sending the people to hell, he wants to torment them because he's a serial killer. He takes pleasure in torturing his victims before even killing them. Um, as you are going to see in the perfect in the <clears throat> in the voice of healing part uh, Caesar series three, we start with the army of the Lord. I'm going to explain to you actually the, the plan of the devil. He doesn't just want to kill, uh, bring you to hell. He wants to torture you before <laughs> he brings you there. So he puts you in gas chambers like the Nazi were doing. So basically, that's the, the the uh, operation uh, method of the devil, he has not changed. Uh, so we saw how uh, Satan went about uh, destroying uh, mankind, but God had a plan to redeem mankind through Christ Jesus, from the power, deliver them from the power of darkness and translate them into the kingdom of the Son of His love, according to Colossians chapter 1, verse 13. And it was for that very purpose of uh, destroying all the works of the devil, starting with uh, sin and then sickness, disease, and premature death, that Christ Jesus was manifested. So that was according to 1 John chapter 3, verse uh, uh, 8. Now, point uh, number two. Uh, it is, or oh, chapter two, um, the right disposition position of the heart to receive the manifestations of God's promise or God's promises in plural because there are so many promises uh, in the Bible. So we need to have the right uh, heart disposition uh, to receive the promises uh, of God. God uses a people. I will say it again. God uses a people. And unfortunately, when people that stumbled um, at the person of Moses were not blessed. People that stumbled at the person of Paul were not blessed. The people that stumbled at the person of Elisha were not blessed, including that captain when the king of the, the prophet said, tomorrow at this time there will be abundance at the gate of Samaria, uh, where he said, even if God were to open the windows of heaven, such a thing can never happen. Well, the prophet said, you're going to see it, but you're not going to partake of it. So we need to have the right disposition of the heart if we want to receive the manifestations of the promises of God. So Proverbs chapter 4, verse 13, the Bible tells us, keep your heart with all diligence. Uh, why? Because out of that heart uh, will proceed the issues of life, the boundaries, the limitations. So the way you think in your heart is going to limit what God can do. That's why God said you have limited the Holy One of Israel, because of the way they were thinking, they were grumbling, they were murmuring all the time. That was the wrong kind of uh, heart disposition, so they could not receive uh, from the Lord. Uh, they also had a wrong disposition towards Moses. Uh, they could not receive also from the Lord. So guard your heart with all diligence. You need to be very careful. Uh, for as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Uh, Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7. So 
all those Bible studies from Come Home till application of preferential plan seven is to tell you how to think in your heart. Truly, that's the whole job, how to think in your heart. So we need to think right, believe right in the name of Jesus. So that is the job of the preacher to teach the people to prepare the heart. The preparation of the heart is our responsibility, uh, but the answer of the tongue belongs to the Lord. That Proverbs chapter 16, verse 1. So we are going to teach the people spiritual truth, um, and they need to perceive it the right way in the heart. They need to receive the right understanding of the word of God and have uh, the faith in the heart, not in the mind. We inform your mind. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm informing your mind, but you will to you need to decide uh, with the partnership of the Holy Spirit to believe it uh, in your heart. We inform your mind. We are giving you spiritual information, though the Holy Spirit is behind it, because the words that we speak are spirit and they are life, but you need to make up your mind and decide to believe it in your heart and the Holy Spirit will help you now to engrave it on the tablets of your heart, not on your uh, electronic tablet, not on the tablet of stones, but on the tablet, the very tablets of your heart like uh, Ezekiel uh, promised that God will give you a new heart. So when we believe uh, those uh, spiritual truth, when we open our heart to receive it, then um, we can perceive rightly what God uh, wants us to do. So we should not miss the truth. The truth of God is so simple. We need to explain it in simple words, not in words like theologians, not uh, uh, with uh, so much uh, intellect, but uh, in layman's terms so that everybody can believe. So we need to guard that heart of ours and let it not uh, wax uh, cold uh, when we hear the word of God. No, 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 no. Let not our ears also be spiritually dull of hearing. And let us not also close our eyes to the truth of the word of God. I don't want to see it. Yes, you need to see the truth of the word of God. So that's what Jesus was telling us in that Matthew chapter 13, verse uh, 15 to verse 16. Uh, he said, uh, Blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. So there is a need to see properly with the eyes of God uh, how the world operates. There is a need to, to hear properly with the hearing of the Spirit and be able to discern what is coming from God, what is coming from the lies of uh, the enemy. And through the teaching of the Word of God, we lay that foundation of seeing the things properly and perceiving what is behind it and who is behind it and also hearing properly. Uh, removing the spiritual wax in our ears so that we can hear properly. Throughout the book of Revelation, God says, he that has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. The Spirit has always been speaking, but have we been hearing? God has always been showing us things, but have we, have we been perceiving? Like Isaiah prophesied, seeing they see, but they do not perceive. Hearing they hear, but they do not understand. So my prayer is that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened to the truth, that your ears are going to be opened in the name of uh, Jesus so that you can see those wonderful uh, promises that are contained in the Bible. And they are all yours and God is going to use you for signs uh, and for wonders, even by the power of the Holy Ghost. So we need that hearing of faith in our life. We need that hearing of faith. That was the prayer that uh, Paul was praying for the church, that the first prayer that he prayed for the church uh, in the first, uh, in Ephesians chapter one, verse 15 to verse 18. Please uh, uh, read that prayer. I used to pray it in the beginning uh, when I came back to Christ in 2013. Uh, there are two prayers in, um, in Ephesians. 
in Ephesians 1 and Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3 prays about we being rooted and grounded in the love. Uh, and Ephesians 1, he's talking about uh, our eyes of understanding uh, being a light. So when people hear the word of God and they have faith, they give their life to Christ, that's the first prayer that we need to pray for them in secret. So Paul, Paul said, therefore, I also hearing of your faith in the Lord. So he heard that they were saved, hallelujah, now. And of your love to all the saints, I do not cease giving thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayer. So you, you see, we pray for those that we have led to Christ. So we keep on thanking God for their life. We keep on praying for them in the secret. But it does not end when they have received Christ. Why would we do that? So that uh, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom. Because the first thing that they will need is wisdom. It is the principal thing. Don't forget the wisdom. And all you're forgetting also, they will need to get uh, understanding. So they need wisdom, but they will also need understanding. And uh, revelation in the knowledge of him. So they need the knowledge. After people are born again, they need the knowledge. Because my people perish for lack of knowledge. Many Christians are born again but they are living like pagans. Not because they don't, uh, they are doing that deliberately because nobody showed them the left from the right. And it is our job to teach them the left from the right in the name of Jesus. The Jonah chapter four, the last verse, uh, God said to, to, to Jonah, listen, the people of Nineveh, they are 120 inhabitants and they don't know the left from the right. So should I destroy the, them? No, I need to tell them the truth first of all, and then they can choose. And when Jonah preached the repentance to them, they repented. They did not know any better that, that even all the animals fasted as well, but the heart was right, in the right place. Though they, they, they were devoid, they were uh, uh, devoid of understanding, but the heart was right, they repented. And God said, you see, we just need to tell people the truth, and then so they will decide. So if you don't give people the knowledge, then they will never know. They will believe the lies of the enemy. They will believe the tradition. They will continue the tradition. In every aspect of life, God has something to say. That's why we need to teach everything that pertains to life and godliness. There is not a, a gray area where God did not say anything about our life. He said everything. So if you choose, to believe that like Jesus and David said, I come in the volume of the book, the Bible, and it's written of, me, written of me to do your will. Your whole life is in the Bible, then you are going to do it. But if you think that only healing is written of you in the Bible, only uh, prosperity is written of you in the Bible, but every other aspect of your life, God, let me do my own thing. No, that's not Christianity. So when we teach people, we give them the knowledge, we reveal unto them how what God wants, what he does not like. God is a person. So when they have the knowledge, then the eyes that the understanding is going to be enlightened. Illumination will happen in the heart. Why? It is so that they may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches, there are many riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. So we are just revealing the people what are the, uh, what is the inheritance in Christ Jesus. From uh, come home till uh, application seven, we are just revealing people what is uh, their inheritance, and giving them the knowledge. So my people pray for lack of knowledge. We want them to come to know and to believe. Now we are trying to help them how to believe in the heart. And also telling them how to go about receiving the inheritance. Because if I don't tell you step by step how to receive that inheritance, you are going to be frustrated. And uh, you are going to think that the uh, father has some favorite children. No, he doesn't have anything. If you do what you say to the other, then he's going to be, uh, operate with you the same way he operated with uh, the, your elder brothers in the Bible days in Jesus' name. So that was the first prayer of Paul to the church of Ephesus. And the second prayer is now you need to be rooted and grounded in the love because uh, as Ephesians chapter three, because love only works. Uh, if faith is not love, um, because we know that he loves us even better than our heavenly father. So listen to the goodness of the Lord. Uh, the Bible study, so the episode of yesterday, 
uh, that, that on Thursday, even today is going to air again, listen to that uh, and discover the goodness of the Lord. God is good, he's good, he's good. So that's why you need to be very careful what you hear. Don't listen to any kind of preacher. Don't listen to any kind of preacher. Uh, you need to test what they are preaching. A lot of them are preaching tradition of men that have made the word of God of no effect. So you need to be very, very careful. And uh, in the house of prayer for nation, it's my responsibility, just like with your children. You know the body of your child. You know how allergic they are to this, this, and that. You know what they ate. So if they ate the fish on Monday, or if they ate like a beef on Monday, on Tuesday they ate something else, uh, let's say fish, then on Wednesday, you change the diet and you know how to balance the meal because you are monitoring the kind of food that you are giving to the child so that the child can grow. And you know, no, okay, I need to start with breastfeeding and then I need to introduce a formula and then I need to introduce some uh, yogurt and um, porridge and so on and so forth. And then I need to introduce some uh, the diet of a uh, uh, child as he grows in age. His digestive system is able to, to do uh, process the food. And it's your responsibility as a parent. And many times we are lazy, pastors are lazy. Uh, they just take a sermon from Sarton. No, read it, digest it, and then remove what you know that your children don't need, or your, your people that God has given into your care, they don't need, or it's going to pollute the teaching and then teach them. It is your responsibility to do so. Uh, the same, that's why uh, I'm very careful what I tell people to read uh, in the name of Jesus. You'll say more so when you go to someone's house, someone wants to give your child some food, you say, no, no, no my son doesn't eat this. My, 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 he's allergic to this. He does not eat it causes him to have a runny stomach. So you, you no. Know, your children. It is your responsibility as the shepherd or shepherdess over their souls. It's also the responsibility of the preacher to watch what he is teaching. That's why we explained that already in Come Home Bible Study. Uh, when revival starts happening, when the house of prayer, uh, God is going to send a lot of people, people are going to come from different kinds of denomination. No problem. Those who are not willing to be trained are not going to be in leadership full stop. Those who are not willing to be trained are not going to be in leadership uh, full stop. I say again, those who are not going to be willing to be trained are not going to be in any leadership full stop. Why? The synagogue uh, rulers believed in Jesus, but uh, they held in high esteem the synagogues. So they did not want to be openly the disciple of Jesus. They just wanted to take what they want. They were interested in the healing. They weren't interested in all the other teachings of Jesus. They were looking for a technique, not a relationship with Jesus per se. And they loved more the praises of being part of the synagogue than uh, being uh, with Jesus. So Nicodemus, Joseph Arimathea, though sometimes they donated money to the, to the ministry of Jesus, you will see none of them as uh, the apostle of Jesus. None of those uh, Pharisees uh, as, uh, that converted and believed in Jesus that were the disciples in secret. You will see none of them uh, in uh, the leadership of uh, Jesus. Because if Jesus cannot uh, train you, he does not uh, know what you are going to teach. You are going to teach again the traditions of men that you picked up in your other church and come and pollute, uh, put old wine into new wine steam. No, we put new wine into new wine skin and old wine skin let it remain in the old wine skin. We trust that the new wine is going to ferment and it's going to be as strong. It's only a matter of time. It's going to be as strong as the old wine. So don't be in a hurry. Life is a process. Uh, and they had a problem during Azusa. Uh, people came and it started to cause a lot of problems. Uh, they did not want to truly be disciples. They wanted to, to still bring different, uh, melting pot, uh, different things. 
So Jesus already told us uh, what it is and how to do things. So we are just going to do Bible. And though Paul was used because he was willing to humble himself and become a disciple. And uh, before even he was commissioned to be an apostle, though he was ordained from his mother's womb, but before he was commissioned, it took him about 13 years. You know, he spent three years in Arabia and then came back. Uh, he was ordained in Antioch about five years later. And then he went away for about 13 years, came back to Jerusalem. He was willing to be under Barnabas, who was a Levite that was converted to Christianity and learn again. Apollos that was very eloquent, okay, but he was not accurate in his teaching because he was still teaching uh, the way uh, they were teaching in the synagogue. So Apollos and Aquila saw his zeal, he had the faith, but uh, not accurate. They sat him down, they taught him, okay, this is what we believe now. Christ is this, 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 and that. So when he accepted to be corrected, and then they embraced him, they, they sent him away to go and strengthen the church that was in Corinth. There is a proper way that they've done it in the book of Acts. And some brethren were just rising up in the morning. I'm a pastor in the church of Jerusalem, so I've come to visit you in uh in Antioch uh oh I'm a, I'm a bishop in uh, the church of uh, uh this is how do you call it uh, Bethlehem so I've come to visit you here in uh, Rome so I will preach so they would come and they would give them the pulpit they would give them the pulpit and they would preach all kinds of the tradition of the Jews what was happening also in Azusa the same thing, they will go, I came from Azusa, okay? They will give them immediately to the pulpit. People were eager. And then they will preach all kinds of rubbish. They will collect an offering and then run away. It happened also in the days of Azusa. Until they read the Bible, how did they do that in the book of Acts so that they would avoid that kind of nonsense happening again? So now that's why now Paul started to sit down and write the letters. Receive Titus, he is my uh, disciple. Receive Timothy, receive uh, Philemon, receive uh, Onesimus, receive Clements. They work with those sisters, they work with me. Receive Lydia, uh, she, hold, uh, she keeps us in a house there and feeds us when we were in a, in a, in a city. Receive so and so. They wrote now letters of uh, uh, recommendation. The church writes letters and recommendations. So that's why if someone is not in the house of prayer, I don't know them. I cannot write recommendations for anyone. I don't know your character. I will be lying because I'm vouching for that person. If someone says, I want to marry, come and do our marriage as I can't. I don't know you. I don't. So I can't. Uh, Put you together. That's why people need to be in the physical uh, church. He was now recommending. And he also said, don't receive uh, the brethren that are coming from James. They are Christians. Yes. They are born again. Yes. They are going to heaven. Yes. But why do you uh, not want us to receive them? He said, because they are still holding on to the tradition of uh, the Jews. When they are coming to the preaching in Jesus, they are preaching what is in the synagogue. They are preaching uh, the, the law of Moses not the, 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 the Bible, but the, the, the culture of the Jews. And they want the Gentile to embrace the culture. They say, no, shut the mouth. They say, shut the mouth. The people now cannot just come and stand. I was a pastor in another church and that I want to be a pastor here. What kind of pastor were you? What kind of understanding of the word of God that you have? The Nazareth to become very, very strict. And he called you the Galatians, you stupid girl, you started well. Now you've allowed those uh, Judaizers to come and pollute your mind, bewitch you. All kinds of teaching on angels, to worship uh, men. I'm afraid that I want to present your chaste virgin, but I need, uh, so I need to travel again in prayer until Christ is now formed in you. So he said, don't even give those brethren one minute. Don't yield to them. Shut them out. So take heed what you hear. Be careful 
how you hear, what you hear and how you hear. Because with uh, the measure that you use, it's going to be measured to you. If you hear lots of rubbish, it's going to kill your faith. It's going to pollute the water of the word that is in Luke chapter 8, verse 18. Though it's a responsibility of every one of us to be like the Christian of Berea. The Christian of Berea, they went back in Acts chapter 26, verse 22, they went back and checked, checked, checked whether what Paul said was uh, uh, in accordance with the word of God. Uh, so, and Paul said, sorry, but the Christian Berea in the book of Acts, but uh, Paul also himself uh, as an apostle, and that's the role of the apostle, to demonstrate the scriptures, to demonstrate to demonstrate where it is, what he's saying, where is it in the Bible? So Paul said, I testify before small and great that I, Paul, have said nothing uh, other than what uh, the prophets, meaning uh, Joshua to Malachi and Moses, meaning from Genesis to Deuteronomy, said. So that was up chapter 26, verse 22. Paul never spoke out of uh, those books from Genesis to Malachi. There was no New Testament. There was no New Testament, only the Old Testament. So, uh, the first book or his book of Roman was written in 55 AD. So they were preaching from uh, Genesis to Malachi. And I can teach you everything. The Holy Communion, like I've explained last time, we were Holy Communion. Everything is from Genesis. Uh, even in Genesis, everything is already there in shadows everything. The destruction of the world is in the flood of Noah, Genesis chapter 8. Everything is but not destroyed with fire. It is in Genesis 18, Sodom and Gomorrah. Everything is already there in shadows. Everything. So I can, even if you remove the New Testament, I will be able to preach Christ to you. The book of Revelation is the book of Exodus and the book of Daniel and Ezekiel. The book of Revelation uh, is also the book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 22 of uh, Revelation is actually the book of Deuteronomy. The same summary of Deuteronomy is the chapter 22 of Revelation. John, Revelation, John did not have a new revelation. He only had uh, now the substance, put that now in context in view of Christ Jesus has already come. There's nothing new. So that's why you can check. Even Jesus in Luke chapter 24, he did not speak outside of uh, the Bible. He, the Bible says beginning from uh, Moses and the prophet. When he says Moses, so the five first book, Genesis, Deuteronomy, and the prophet that Joshua to Malachi, he expounded the scriptures to them. So anyone who rejects the Old Testament, get out of those churches. Because the promises that are contained in those uh, books that they rejected, God also is going to remove those promises from your life. And anyone that adds to this book as well, the curses that are contained in this Bible are going to be added in the life. So take heed what you hear in the name of Jesus. We need to be able to rightly divide the word of truth. We need to be able to rightly divide the word of truth. So Paul is saying to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 2 from 15 uh, uh, to, um, to, to 19, he says, uh, um, there are some, uh, so, so let me take it from the beginning. He said, uh, uh, study. So you don't just read the word of God, you need to study it. When you preach the word of God, you need to study it, not just read it. So we read the word of God, we study the word of God, and we meditate on the word of God. We do those three things with the word of God. We read it, we study it, we meditate it. And when we study it, we that, uh, understand that we have, we go and meditate with it, we read it again. It's a cycle. We keep on doing those three things with uh, the word of God. So when we study it, we see now the nuances between between uh, that uh, within the text, and we draw out the instructions from what we so study to show your uh, earnestly uh, to show yourself uh, 
approved of God. Not, uh, not approved of men, but of God. We are not studying so that you can have uh, preaching to, to share. We did not write any of this Bible study to preach to anyone. It was my, these are my personal notes. These are my personal notes. It just happened that Louise was there and that I was passing it to Louise to read so that I would be able to disciple her. But these are my personal notes. These are my, my Bible studies. <laughs> To you, it was not so that I can preach on TBN and so on and so forth. These are God correcting Jerry, showing Jerry this need to change in your life, this, 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 and that. So you are studying to show yourself approved of God because God through your study is going to point out things in your life. If you wake up to study only so that you can preach, I want to study on the uh, uh, praise so that I can teach. You don't understand what it is. Study on praise so that you can praise the Lord in spirit and truth. Study on confession so that you can truly confess and repent. Study the daily section in the expose so that not so that you can preach, so that you can expose them in your own life and then change. Just like I exposed them, my own sexual sin, the Bible study, David, David's sexual sin uh, exposed. It is uh, you. The word of God is a mirror. It is looking at you. It is not you are trying to show it to other people. It needs to look at you first of all. And then when you correct your own uh, face in the mirror, and then you can now show to other people also so that they can correct uh, also their own reflection. You explain there how you corrected your own face. That's why the, the blunders of Peter are recorded because the word of God was used to correct uh, Peter. He, cleaned himself up with by looking at the perfect law of liberty. And don't be ashamed. So that when they will ask you a question, you can uh, answer them. You are able to rightly divide the word of truth, but to show on all those profane. profane. Profane person is a person that has no regard for what is holy. He has no a profane person is a person that has no regard for what is holy. The body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. If someone is making light of holiness, he's a profane person. Vain bubbling. So uh, they will increase as life today. They've increased everywhere you are listening to them. Uh, to more ungodliness, that's what it uh, because they are profane. And the word um, and the word will. Eat like a gangrene, even like a uh, gangrene. That's the wound that is uh, in the in the body that is eating up and growing all over the the, the leg. Among whom are Hemius, Philetus, uh, they have erred concerning the truth. And what are they doing? They say that the resurrection is already passed, and they are overthrowing the faith of the son. So if you are not careful about what you are hearing. Your faith is going to be overthrown. Nevertheless, hallelujah, the foundation of God stands sure. There's a foundation that is unshaken, but it's still standing sure. Having this seal, even the seal of the Holy Ghost, the Lord knows those who are his. Not everybody that preaches the gospel is of the Lord. He's the preacher of the Lord. No. My mom was saying to me, no, no, this preacher is watched all over Africa. I say, who? So the, the, the fact that someone is watched all over Africa doesn't mean that he's approved of God. Maybe approved of men, study to show yourself approved to God. I say, stop listening to that preacher. Or he does healings. I say, yeah, who cares? Satan also can perform some small healings. The magician of Pharaoh turned the, the rod into a, a serpent. He also uh, turned uh, the, the water in that bowl into blood. But after the third miracle, they could not catch up with Moses. The power was limited. The fact that you see some miracles doesn't mean that uh, the person is of God. That's why we need to study to show ourselves up. We need to test the spirit behind it. We need to judge those prophecies behind it. And I called my brother. I said, okay, send my mom some of the French-speaking preachers that are truly of the Lord, not those charlatans. So you study to show yourself approved to God. Some ministers are not approved of God. They are approved by men, not by God. So and they are overthrowing the faith of men, polluting the water, of the word of God. 
the Lord knows those who are his. And he will reveal unto you those who are his. And even if he reveals unto you, you still need to continue to judge like the Berean Christians. Let everyone who names the name of the Lord do what? Depart from iniquity. If someone is still encouraging people to live in iniquity, well, he's not the minister of God. No matter what title he carries, he's not uh, the minister of God. So we are not advocating revolution. Revolution is uh, you overthrow uh, with the establishment of the crown. When there was a French Revolution, for instance, uh, they removed uh, the, 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 the king and uh, they put in place uh, a presidency. So the law, the, the whole law of uh, the nation was uh, changed. But uh, the New Testament is not a revolution, it is a reformation. So that's why we need to study. Not everybody should be teaching and saying rubbish. We should study to show ourselves approved of God. So, so that's what Paul was telling us in that um, uh, Hebrews uh, chapter 9, 6 to 12, he's talking about the reformation. We're down to the time of uh, reformation, not a revolution. So to reform means to bring something. Uh, uh, so let me read it to you according to the Webster Dictionary of 19, uh, of 18, uh, 18th century. So to reform, uh, the revolution, for instance, let's start with the revolution. So it is uh, um, actually, um, change and have a new uh, and completely different administration of the whole household, even of the kingdom. So you change completely the constitution of the nation and the, uh, of the country. Jesus did not come to do that. He said, he said, I did not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. So once it has been fulfilled, what we are calling now, uh, I've given already the example of the French Revolution. They abolished the, the, the monarchy. They established now a new constitution and a new government and that they were now, a, how do you call it, a presidency. But we, with the reformation, what we are doing actually, it is a, the correction or amendment of life, of manners, or uh, anything uh, vicious or corrupt or abused by way of um, eminence or elevate elevation to a higher standard. So that's what Jesus came to do. He came to change the corruption that was uh, for the old system, to bring it to a higher standard, the original uh, standard that God had in his uh, heart, not the corruption that it had uh, become the hypocrisy that has filled in uh, the, the, the Pharisees and so on and so forth. It is a reformation to bring it to a higher standard, the original standard God intended to elevate it to a higher standard. So we no longer need the blood of bulls and goats because something higher and better has come, the blood of Jesus. And I've touched on that on series three of uh, the voice uh, of uh, healing. I don't know which uh, episode of the, the armor of God. And Martin Luther had an understanding of it when he did his reformation, the Protestant reformation in AD 1517. Uh, it is the Protestant reformation of Martin Luther. It is not a Protestant revolution. So we removed the corruption that entered through the Catholic Church, the worship of Mary, the worship of uh, angels, the, the paying for the forgiveness of sins, all that corruption that crept into the Church of Jesus Christ, we removed it and he wrote his 90 uh, theses and nailed them. This is how the correction that I'm bringing to the corruption that came into the, through the pop, uh, uh, the popes that did not even know the word of God. So he says a pope that is ignorant of the word of God, not equipped with the word of God. Uh, he said, no, he says the other way around. A layman equipped with the word of God is better than any pope that is uh, not equipped with uh, the word of God. Then they excommunicated him from the Catholic Church. Yes, it is a Protestant reformation, not a 
a revolution. And also in the days of uh, Azusa, the street revival, they also understood it that uh, they came to bring uh, the, they used to call the primitive uh, faith. So they wanted to bring it to the original faith, like in the days of the uh, act of the apostles, because corruption has entered, no more holiness, no more gift of the spirit. They wanted a restoration of the primitive uh, faith. Like I already mentioned at Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, that I did not come to destroy the law or abolish it, but I came to perfect it or fulfill it. So we need to have that understanding. And anyone that is preaching revolution, uh, for getting rid of the Old Testament, they don't know the word of God. At best, they are ignorant. So why will you follow a blind man that is leading you into a ditch? The two of you are going to fall into a ditch. Get out of those uh, healing ministries, uh, lest you suffer the same things. that uh, they are going, going to suffer of God. So we are restoring the prophetic to the original uh, intent of God. We are restoring the apostolic to the original intents of God. Though to worship, we are restoring it to the original intent. So we no longer do animal sacrifices. So if you go to a church where they are telling you to bring a goat, either they are Satanists, that's the worst case, or uh, the best case scenario, they are just ignorant of the new covenant. So that's why they're still doing animal sacrifices and so on and so forth. If you go to a church, they are still burning candles to pray and burning incense. At best, they are ignorant. So they don't know that the incense represent the prayers of the saints. The light of the candle, actually the light of the word of God, the revelation, the entrance of your word gives light and understanding uh, to the simple. Your word is like a lamp onto my feet and the light onto my path. So they need the revelation of the word of God, not burning a candle. So at best, they are just ignorant. At worst, they are into awkward. Look at the kind of candles they are burning. So we are bringing it to its original design, elevating it to a higher standard. These were shadows. Now the body or the substance has come. It is Christ, uh, Jesus. So it is not just about, you see, it is not just about laying hands on the sea. This understanding why we do those things and what we are not supposed to do anymore in Jesus' precious name. So like I already mentioned, Luke 24, 25 to 27, Jesus from Moses and the prophet expounded the scriptures unto them. Even Jesus did not speak outside of the written word of God. So we need to be like... Uh, our apostles of the faith in the book of Acts. Peter also tells us in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 9 and uh, to 21, that we need to stop having any private interpretation of the word of God. The word of God is on stone. Hallelujah. That's what God engraved that uh, on, ta on tablets. So it does not change. He did not write it with a pencil that you can erase it. They had papyrus. They came out of Egypt. So they had papyruses. So you could write on a papyrus and a scroll. It. God did not write his law on papyrus. And those, some of the parchments that they did papyruses, they are more than 5,000 years. So it, they, they were staying for long. God did not write it on papyruses. He wrote his law and engraved them on stones, meaning it, it will not change. I am the Lord. I do not change. If there is someone that needs to change, you need to change, not God. I need to change, not God. So it is engraved on stones. So let us know that you cannot change it. If you have to change it, you need to break it and find that you are your own stones and write it yourself. But it's on stones that God wrote with his own finger. And nobody could add none, need to add to it or to remove, uh, remove from it. So we have zero private interpretation of the word of God. So this is the prophecy of scripture that we do well to heed. Those holy men of God, they spoke as 
uh, as they were led by the Holy Spirit. They did not invent anything. And what uh, they prophesied came to pass. So you do well to pay attention to the written word of God. If any man tells you, that says the Lord, okay, tell him where it is written. If he does not know where it is written, so write it down and go examine that prophecy. If you don't find it in line with the word of God, disregard that prophecy. Even if it is the bishop or pope who told you that prophecy, we need to be Berean Christians. Like I told you, Deuteronomy chapter 22, from 18 to 19, it is actually uh, Moses, Paul is, uh, or John is writing the same thing that uh, uh, Moses said in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4, verse 2, that anyone that will add to this book or take away from this book, well, the plagues that are in this book are going to be added, and the portion of um, uh, blessings that are in this book concerning him are going to be taken away in the name of uh, Jesus. We don't add to this book. We don't take away from this book, Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 32. So that was the summary of Deuteronomy that uh, John put in the book of uh, Revelation. So I can show you from the, and throughout the perfect redemption plan and the application, we've shown all the scriptures that of the majority of the scriptures of Jesus, what was taken in the, uh, the Old Testament, the majority of the scriptures of Paul, of James, of Jude, of John, where it was taken from the book of Revelation. There is nothing new in the New Testament. They brought it to a higher standard. That's why even the Old Testament, they only cared about the outward appearance. Jesus said, no, 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 I have a higher standard. Sin starts in the heart. You can be not for fornicating or committing adultery, but adultery starts in the heart. This is the higher standard of the New Testament. Thank God you were strong enough. You did not uh, cheat on your spouse. You did not commit adultery. You kept your body clean, but your heart was full of filthiness. So I did not come to abolish the law. I came to raise it to a higher standard. So I want now to deal, and I want to wash the cup from the inside. You are cleaning the outside, which is good because you did not have the power to clean the inside. But now let me purge your inside, pour the Holy Ghost in you. Now she no longer has dominion over you. You can even cleanse the inside so that the cup is clean from the inside. This is the highest standard. This is the reformation, the original thing that God intended to clean the inside, not just the outside. The, that's why he said, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. The Pharisees were not practicing the sin, but it was inside. They were full of filth inside. So Jesus came not to abolish it. And now some of those worthless sons of skiffers of today, they are preaching, oh, you can just live anyhow you want. Grace. Grace is not uh, a license to sin. God works on your heart and gives you the power to will and to do for his good pleasure to overcome sin because sin has been destroyed at Calvary. And when you were born again, your body of sin was crucified with it. How can, can you be crucified and buried in baptism and you are still continuing it to practice sin? Now, when we stop the outward appearance, like Paul said to Timothy, the lie, as I've read, let anyone that names the name of Jesus depart from iniquity. As you study to show yourself approved of God, then you see things that he likes and does not like, and you start departing from the things that he does not like. Now, God approves of your life. God loves all of us. He doesn't approve of all of us. God loves you as much as he loves his son, Jesus Christ. Your life is worth the life of his son, Jesus Christ, but he does not approve of all of us. So we study now to show ourselves approved of God. Okay, God, what do you like that I need to do? I need to depart from so that I can be approved of you. So it's actually a mirror, the word of God. So we are bringing it, God, Jesus came to raise it to a higher standard. So it is now our choice in this New Testament. What kind of a preacher do we want to be? What kind of believer do we want to be? P 
Peter tells us that uh, the word of God uh, is incorruptible. And we also that have received this incorruptible word of God that abides forever, we need to live in righteousness. So if we don't, then we are going not to be approved by God and we are going to limit truly our God, hallelujah. Psalm 78, verse 41, the Bible says they limited the Holy One of Israel. Let us not limit what God can do for us. He can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask, above all that we think according to the power of the Holy Ghost that is at work in us. That's Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. But we limit, because if he doesn't approve of our ways, he will not fight for us. When a man's ways please the Lord, the Bible says he will even make his enemies to be at peace with them. The truth is, uh, <clears throat> God wants to fight our battles, but he needs to approve of, his, of, uh, of our ways. And the battle is no longer going to be ours. The battle is going to be the Lord's in Jesus' uh, precious name. So that is uh, our responsibility. So we raise the standard of the word of God. We don't lower the standard. We put back the tent pegs that our fathers removed. We go and put it back where it was initially. What was the original intent of God? Be holy as your father in heaven is uh, holy, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, which is your reasonable worship. Revelation, Romans chapter 12, verse one and two. He's begging us, brethren, by the mercies of God. So the word of God that we are hearing today must be mixed with uh, faith. So as a Hebrew chapter 4, verse 1 and 2, when we are receiving the word of God, we need to prepare our heart to receive that word with faith. We need to mix it. If there are other elements, when you mix something, you mean that there are other elements. You cannot just mix water. If there is nothing in it, it is not, uh, you are, if there is only water in it, there is no other thing that you are stirring up water, you are not mixing. When they, when they say to mix uh, your faith, uh, it means that there was something else. So faith is one of the ingredients in that uh, pot. There are other ingredients in that pot that you now need to mix together. Hallelujah, with the faith. Holiness is one of the other ingredients in that uh, the water of the word of God is uh, another ingredient in that uh, pot. And that you need to, prayer is another ingredient. Fasting is another ingredient. Because some of the things that they, they don't go out by, except by prayer and fasting. But faith also comes by hearing and hearing of the word of God. So faith is only one ingredient in that pot where you have put a lot of things and you need to mix them together so that you can receive the promise of God. That's another teaching which I don't have time to do. So faith is just one element. There are other ele elements in that pot that you need to mix together. And you are going to be able to receive uh, the promises uh, of God uh, in your life. So you need to have uh, great expectation in the word of God. To receive the miracle of God, you need expectation. You need great uh, expectation. And like the Bible says that the Proverbs chapter 23, verse 17 and 18, that the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut off. God is not going to cut off your expectation. So if you believe God in your heart that you are going to receive and you do things to be approved, because if we don't, we, what we are doing, we are preaching only the promises of God. We are not telling people the conditions and they are frustrated because uh, they come with expectation and they don't receive anything. We don't tell them the conditions. There is always any coin has a head and a tail. We are telling people the head, what it is written with uh, 50p or 2p, the value or the promise. We're not telling them the, 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 the tail. Uh, it has uh, the, the head of the queen. Uh, if the door is that it is not backed by Her Majesty, <laughs> well, your currency is worth uh, nothing. 
it is not banked, uh, backed by the Bank of England. It is worth uh, nothing. So if uh, the promises that you are claiming is not backed by uh, the seal of heaven, heaven has not approved that you can receive it because you did not meet, not that they had they dislike you or they dislike Brother Jerry, no. There are some conditions that I need to meet so that I will be approved of God and he's going to release uh, those manifestations into my life. And only then those expectations are not going to be cut off in the name of uh, Jesus. So, Continue to believe. When you come in the place of prayer, you need to believe. You need to believe that you are going to uh, receive in the name of Jesus. And also when you go and preach the gospel, when you go and share the gospel, you need also to believe that the one that is speaking to you, as long as he's speaking in line with the written word of God, that is always important. That's why in throughout these Bible studies, I have uh, uh, done due diligence to point to you where those uh, verses were taken from. And in fact, there are more Bible references in our Bible study than uh, in the Bible with references. Sometimes even a, a chapter uh, of the Bible, so you, can, you can even have 60 references. We did due diligence so that you can at least trust uh, the prophecy of scripture that do not fail. Provided what uh, that man of God, that, that minister of the gospel, women or, may, uh, or men, is saying to is in line with the counsel of the written word of God. Uh, if you receive that prophet, uh, in the name of a prophet, you shall also receive that prophet's reward. God uses people. Though people abuse that power, but the truth is you need to believe that God has sent uh, that person into your life. It is pointless to be in a church where you don't believe in that uh, ministry of uh, that pastor or that uh, apostle or prophet. It is pointless. You are wasting your time because your mouth, you are speaking against uh, him or her. When you come at home, <laughs> You heard the wonderful sermon. When you went back home with your children and you are you, you are you are you are analyzing, not we need to analyze the word of God, that's true. But you say, Oh, the pastor did not preach well, blah blah blah, blah blah blah. You are criticizing, criticizing everything. So you think that you could have done better, and so on and so forth. People like that are not blessed. Criticism is not the gift of the spirit. It's denouncing uh, Numbers chapter 23. Balaam came to criticize and deny or to denounce or to openly uh, criticize uh, Israel and to curse Israel. He, he said, how can I denounce or openly criticize uh, uh, Israel? God has not denounced them. So if you go to uh, a church and you already know that, I think that part of the pastor has more anointing, but because he doesn't have his church in our town, that's why I'm coming here. But my church is uh, in uh, Congo. Uh, but uh, because I didn't, my, my, my pastor doesn't have a church here, that's why I'm coming here. So you are despising already that the church where you are going to. You're not going to receive anything because you've not received that the minister as someone that is a center in your life. There are some spiritual things. I like I say to the to, to one of the I say, I say, I don't want you to waste your time because I want you to come out of immigration very quick, very, very quick. So because if I were in your shoes, I would also want to come out of immigration. I will see that uh, problem as well. So what I would advise you is to find a church where you believe the word of the pastor. When he says uh, that the church is going to fast, you are fasting also with the church. You're not saying that, no, I don't want to fast. I don't believe in that. It won't work. You're not going to receive anything because you are not a disciple in that uh, church. So find a church where you can uh, receive. So uh, she, ah, she was shocked. I, said, I always tell the truth. I care more about you getting your results than me trying to boost my ego. I don't have any. 
So she went, did not work for two years. She came back. Uh, she said, okay, 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 I, I will do, I will do. Okay, we prayed and so on and so forth. She got the papers. Uh, and then Pastor G, I'm leaving. I say, amen. Glory to God. At least you are delivered from immigration. God bless you. But while you are going, believe that pastor to the next level of your life uh, in the name of Jesus. If you don't believe, it won't work. The same thing also for church. That's what Paul says. If you give grudgingly, uh, you are member. Uh, I should have kept my five pounds. Keep all your five pounds because you are not blessed. God does not like those who give out of compulsion. He likes a cheerful uh, give. If you choose in your heart to give one pound, then give that one pound, but with a cheerful uh, heart. And if it is God who send that man or woman of God, God will uh, raise help from that man of God there. So, and people that are going to give in that ministry are going to give uh, as if it is a privilege for them to give into that uh, ministry. So there are some rule of engagement in the spirit to receive that a lot of people do not uh, understand. So receive. In the, in the name of the prophet, you are going to receive that prophet's reward in the name of Jesus. That's Revelation chapter, uh, Matthew chapter 10, verse 41. First, uh, second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20. The Bible says, uh, part, part B, second Chronicles 20, 20, part B. Be, uh, the king said to the, 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 the nation, believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established and believe also in his prophet and you shall uh, prosper. The French rendering says, believe in the Lord your God and you shall be invincible. Hallelujah. Well, if you believe in God, you are going to be invincible. Nobody is going to be able to stand before you all the days of your life. But God is going to use an individual to give you direction. And nobody is an island and nobody has the monopoly of hearing from God. Even David was a king and a prophet himself, but he had Samuel to tell him prophecy. He had the, the, the Nathan. When Samuel died, God added the, the prophet in Dan as well. So you don't have, he would pray in his bedroom about building the temple and go speak to Nathan. Go and tell him that I heard his prayer, prayer uh, but he was not going to build it. It is his son. You are going to have shortcuts in life. So expectation in the name of uh, Jesus, provided what the person is saying is in line with uh, the written uh, word of God. So uh, the true gospel that we preach, Peter tells us uh, in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 5 to verse 8, he's talking about uh, uh, the last days, what kind of a Christian are we supposed to be? What kind of preachers are we supposed to be? We are supposed to be like Lot, who was righteous in Sodom. And when Sodom and Gomorrah uh, were destroyed, only Lot, the righteous, and his family were saved. So if we want to be saved from the destruction of the world that is coming from fire, not from flood anymore, but from fire, we need to be righteous people. The unrighteous, as we all know now in the house of prayer for nation, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 9 to 10, will not inherit the kingdom. Let nobody deceive you. They may collect your tithe, your offering, your seed, your faith, or whatever they, your Isaac, give, sell your house and give it to them. Pray the Lord. Even if you give all your money, you are not going to be saved if you are into the sin, into death, unless you repent. So let nobody deceive you. Let no one deceive you. The unrighteous are not going to inherit the kingdom. So if you want what kind of man you want to be, you need to be like uh, uh, Lot, a righteous man. He's the one that was saved from destruction. You need to, what kind of preacher? The days of Noah also, the whole earth was destroyed. So you need only Noah and his family were saved because he was a preacher of righteousness. So what kind of preacher are you supposed to be? To be? You're supposed to be a preacher of righteousness or holiness in the name of Jesus and preach it to the people. Preach holiness to the people in the name of Jesus. The word of God is supposed to correct. This is not just to tell us prophecies that we like. Correction or instruction is a way of life, like the book of Proverbs says. God will correct us our whole life. He will correct us. 
Anyone that cannot take correction, uh, God will not be able to use him. And he will suffer a lot of shipwreck and marriage wreck, ministry wreck, because he doesn't like correction. When you correct him, he becomes, or he or she becomes offended and uh, uh, runs away. Hebrews chapter 12, 9 to 11, Paul says, we had earthly parents, they corrected us. And we took it. They corrected us because they chastened us, even or disciplined us, as uh, uh, it seems uh, good for them. But our God, he disciplines, he chastens us, he corrects us for our own good, so that we may be partaker of his holiness. And discipline has never been pleasant at first. It is never. So it is not joyous but, or pleasant, but grievous. Discipline, it is grievous. You are not going to like what God is going to tell you that at first because your flesh is fighting. Your carnal mind is fighting. Your carnality, the Bible says, uh, friendship with the world or carnality is enmity with God. So your flesh truly or your carnality is fighting the discipline that God wants to put in your life. It is not pleasant. Let nobody tell you that it is, it is not pleasant. It is not joyous. But it is grievous. So Paul is blunt with us. But nevertheless, afterwards, when you have been trained by that discipline, it will yield the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those that have been exercised by, by it. Not just the fruit of righteousness, the healing power, the, the, the peace in your marriage, in every aspect of life, it is the same principle. If you don't follow the principle, the discipline of God says about Christian life, you are not going to grow. About marriage, you are not going to have a good marriage. About child bring, children, uh, bringing up children, you are not going to be successful in bringing up those children. God has something to put in place in your life. And it is not pleasant at first. It's not joyous. It is even grievous. But if we are children of God, we are going to submit to his correction in the name of Jesus. He's going to use uh, men and women as part of uh, the Christian life in the name of uh, Jesus. So how we receive that, uh, that prophecy is very, very important. It may be a correction, but uh, we humble ourselves to accept that uh, correction in the name of Jesus. When also you are sharing the word of God, you also need to believe that now it is God that is speaking through you. There are two scriptures as a born again believer that is walking in righteousness that should have in your heart. Matthew chapter 10, verse 20, that it is the spirit of your father that is now speaking through you. And then Galatians chapter two, verse 20. So the two of them have 20. So Matthew 10, 20 and uh, Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20 said, I have been crucified with uh, Christ. Nevertheless, I live. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith. Uh, it is no longer I that live, but Christ that lives uh, through me. And the life that I now live, I live by the faith of uh, the Son of God who gave himself for me and who loved me. Or vice versa, he loved me and gave himself for me. So you believe that you reckon, Paul says, in other words, you reckon and you consider yourself dead. So the Jerry does not exist. He does not have any opinion anymore. Christ is now living his life from me. And if it were Christ that were living his life for me, would Christ entertain those kind of filthy thoughts? No. That Jerry that used to entertain filthy thoughts, that used to be a fornicator, was crucified with Christ and buried with Christ in baptism. The one that is uh, resurrected now is a new man. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. He's a new creation. Things in him are of God. He has himself dead to sin, but now he's alive to God. So when now he speaks, he believes. As long as it is in accordance uh, with the written word of God, he believes that it is now the spirit of his father that is speaking through him, even the spirit of uh, Christ. You need to believe it. If you don't believe it, then there will be a problem. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, you should not stumble over the vessel that God is using. He may have uh, a weak appearance of Paul. It is uh, written in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 10, that his bodily presence is, is actually weak, but his uh, uh, letters are weighty and powerful, but his speech is contemptible. So if you are, it's not an excuse for men of God, okay? It is not an excuse for men of God not to improve uh, 
on the communication steers, which is not an excuse. Moses was making an excuse that, that I'm not, I'm slow of speech, I cannot uh, speak well. Who created the mouth? So God is going to train your mouth. You, so you have a job to do, um, but God will deal with your low self-esteem and then God is going to train you, to train you, to train you, to, to build the confidence in you. But let not people stumble over your speech. Let them not stumble over your physical appearance. And don't also make anything to make the people stumble over you. John the Baptist as a prophet, he was dre dressing in a funny way. He was wearing a uh, camel uh, hair and then a belt of uh, leather, uh, having a strange diet, uh, eating the honey and uh, uh, locust only. Well, it was permitted for because they were uh, doing prophetic action, even with I praise the Lord for that. Hallelujah, hallelujah. But you are kind of, uh, with that kind of behavior, yeah. lots of people will not want to relate with you properly. Uh, they will see you as a weirdo, but okay, hallelujah. He, he removed all those shadows. Did Jesus do some prophetic action? Yes, when he put some dirt, he spat on the ground and made a clay and then put on the eyes of that guy and go wash the pool of Siloam. It was a prophetic action. Uh, he did another, uh, two other prophetic actions. I think I put that in the application of the prophet redemption plan on prophetic action, how Jesus did prophetic actions as well. But himself, his own life was a normal life. He did not dress like the prophet because I came in the spirit of Elijah, no. He dressed uh, no, uh, uh, in a normal way. He was wearing a wonderful robe, a seamless robe, so even an expensive one. That's why they gambled over that seamless uh, coat and over. If it were rags, then nobody would be gambled, casting the lots to, to have a part of it. So he dressed uh, in a nice way so that he can be, though he was a prophet, but he did not dress like uh, the order of Elisha as a prophet that uh, uh, will make them be strange. He ate normal food. He did not have a special diet of uh, locust and all that nonsense so that he will not uh, offend people by his diet, so that he's not going to offend some people by his uh, dress code. Though we should not stumble over it, but the man of God also should not uh, make uh, uh, people to stumble by his own doing, by the way he's dressing, the way he's doing that. So change uh, your way of uh, behaving uh, so that you may help uh, everybody in the name of uh, Jesus. So don't stumble over the man of God. Don't stumble over the way he's dressing, uh, his speech. Moses also had a speech like uh, impediments. God uh, helped him also slow of speech. So if you stumble over those little, little things, uh, you are not going to be blessed uh, by the Lord in the name of uh, Jesus. So if you stumble also over the past of that uh, individual, it's going to be problematic because David uh, murdered Uriah uh, and uh, raped uh, uh, Bathsheba. It was not consensual. It was a rape. That's why God took away that son. He did not condone of the rape, not just the adultery of David, but the rape and the murder. First Samuel chapter 15. Uh, Nathan came, it says that first Samuel chapter 12 and first Samuel chapter 15. Uh, no, that was first Samuel chapter, second Samuel chapter 12. I don't know. Uh, yeah, first, second Samuel chapter 12. 12, that's when David committed uh, uh, adultery with, uh, uh, with Bathsheba. So, uh, and God uh, punished him for that. God corrected him through Nathan and God also punished him. God disciplined. If you are a son of God, then you are going to, going to accept the discipline of God. Do not be deceived. Galatians chapter 6, whatever man is going to sow, he's going to reap it. Even after you are born again, if you continue to behave like uh, uh, a pagan, God is going to discipline him. David, God loved him, but when he did that thing, God disciplined him. God removed him from uh, 
being the king and God disciplined him. And when he repented, he came back uh, on the throne. If you're a child, if you are without the correction, without discipline, then you're a bastard. That's what uh, Hebrews chapter 9, all is telling us. All of us have received, uh, Hebrews chapter 12, all of us have received the correction of uh, the Lord. It's a way of life. So either you accept correction, uh, David accepted the correction, but uh, when we look at uh, <laughs> King Saul in 1 Samuel chapter 15, he rejected the correction. No, I don't take the correction of God. I refuse. Still honor me in front of people. And lots of us, we go says our regret. If you accept the correction of God, he's going to deal with you as with a son, and he's going to lift you up at the end. Even if you did the mistakes, he's going to restore you. But if you reject the correction of God, God, we say, like he said to Samuel, I, reg I regret about the soul making him king. I wanted to establish his kingdom forever, but now I will find someone else. The word of God is uh, the highest of all authorities in our life. When push come to shove, we go with the word of God. That's why even though God said, children obey your parents, but he said, obey your parents in the Lord. When push come to shore, my pay the highest of all the authorities, the word of God, not even my parents. That's why when parents went to worship idols, worship, they were the first ones they have to pick up the stone to stone their own parents uh, to death. Because the commandment of the Lord says, anyone that uh, Practice idol worship should be stoned to death. And those of his household that saw him practicing righteousness, to say that we did not practice righteousness, uh, idolatry, sorry, with our father or with our mother, we should be the first one to stone them. So when push comes to shove, if what your parents are asking you to do violates the word of God, go with the word of God. When push comes to shove, your spouse decide to violate the word you disobey the authority of your husband. That's why you should marry a Christian, otherwise you're going to be in trouble. You want to go to the mosque, if he's a mosque, and you're not a leader. Your children are supposed to be with the Lord. And now bring your child to the mosque as well. That was the problem of Moses, he was unequally yoked with uh, the daughter of the witch of Midian. Jephro was not a priest, priest of Midian. And then he said, okay, okay, okay. For her to have a peace in this marriage, let me give one son to uh, Yahweh. So I will take the firstborn, Gershom, I will circumcise him. But you and your God, you can have uh, the second son. So he did not circumcise the second son. Who told you to go marry pagan? The word of God still, still applies. I want all your children. I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I want... Uh, Abraham, I want his son, I want his grandson. And I'm not compromising on it. So when now uh, he called uh, Moses, go set my people free. And God, the Bible says God came to kill Moses and his wife. And what was the problem? The children. I've given one child to Satan and one to me. I want all the two children. So when she saw that uh, God was trying to kill Moses. It is serious, this issue of marriage. It is serious, the issue of children. God wants godly offspring. The reason why he hated divorce is because he's seeking for God's godly offspring. So that's why you want to be involved in your marriage, the kind of person that uh, you want to marry. He needs to meet the conditions of God, must be genuinely born again because God is interested in your children and grandchildren. He wants them to serve the, the Lord. So now the wife, Zipporah, took now a uh, flint and went herself and cut off the foreskin of the second child and threw it at the feet of uh, Moses. Say, you are the husband of blood. Yes, it's a blood covenant with God. I want your children. I'm not just saving you. One push come to shove, even in marriage. Now, if you want to marry the pagan, you'd have that problem. Say, no, I just need to have peace with my husband or with my wife. I need to go to the Buddhist temple, to the mosque with him or with her. So you've backslidden. That's what the problem of uh, Solomon. Solomon, he said, okay, you know, I've married those pagan women. God forbid him. Forbid all Israel. Don't marry the pagans. He said, no, 
where they still want to worship the God. So he erected pillars, obelisks for all his women. And he would also burn incense. So they turned his heart away from the Lord. He would worship the Lord, but he also worship those idols. And God said, I regret. But for the sake of I, your, your father, David, I'm not going to remove the kingdom while you are still alive, just because I respect your father. But as soon as you die, I, the Lord, will take away 10 tribes from you. I'm just going to leave you with one tribe. May God not regret it. Come to show we stand with the world. It is, a, it is the heart of all authorities. You know what? On every single word, when push off, we stand on the word of God because you are going to forfeit your great destiny. God wanted to say, I wanted to establish you forever, soul. It is not about fasting before you go and fast. No, 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 no. It's about your life, first of all. Not fasting. Obedience is better than the sacrifice. That first time in chapter 15, 22, 22 uh, to 24. Obedience is better than the sacrifice. When actually you are rebelling against the Lord, it is as if you are practicing the witchcraft. Rebellion against the word of God is as if it's as good as if you were practicing witchcraft. That's how God sees it. You need to see things the way God sees it. When God says, This is the way, and they say, No, I'm going to rebel against it. The Bible says Solomon willingly and defiantly disobeyed the Lord. Samuel also, Saul also, really willfully and defiantly disobeyed the Lord. He rejected the because I also have read, because you rejected my word, if you reject the counsel of the word of God, God also rejects you. And a lot of people, God have already rejected them. Not in, the, in different aspects of life, because life is uh, in different uh, compartments. So in some compartments of marriages, God sometimes has already rejected. In the compartment of uh, doing this, God also has a uh, rejected because uh, you rejected this word i also reject uh, you Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 though i always quote half of the verse but let me now quote verbatim the whole verse Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 my people perish for lack of knowledge and because they have rejected the knowledge so i also has rejected you from being my priests so god also rejected them from being priests he also god rejected the soul from being a uh, he is a king. So God rejects people from the ministry. He rejects people from authority when you reject his word. Let uh, he that has a hear. Let the, he that has ear hear what the church, what the spirit is saying to the church. It is very important to God. So I will skip all the William Booth's stories. Uh, Okay. We know the story, the story of Ryan Abanke. So these are men that God has used in spite of the limitation. William Booth of the Salvation Army, uh, William Seymour, I've mentioned him. Ryan Abanke, you know his own testimony as well as he was always having uh, zeros in mathematics <laughs> his father thought he was not clever enough to be the, the senior pastor that will take over uh, him uh, after he's uh, retired from the church but you see god still used uh, uh ryan abanke and before he went to glory he had uh, 70 million 78 million documented salvation for christ for all nations so he has led millions of christ of souls to christ more than his father and his brother in fact even his elder brother that uh, his pastor thought will take uh, over the church he, until the death of Rainer Banke, his elder brother was not saved he had back and he was not he did not even come back to christ so I don't know if he has come to Christ after the death of uh, Ryan Abanke. So man may have their own criteria, but God has another criteria. As long as you are willing, when there is a willingness, God is able to train you. You need to see the church like the, an army. And in fact, the, the army has a taken principles from the Bible. The church will take nobody as long as that person is willing. And he will train them, equip them, and make them generals, make them kings. A donkey 
keeper like the soul becomes a king. A shepherd boy becomes a king like David. And the U.S. military also that uses the principles of the Bible, they take people like uh, Colin Powell, uh, that was a uh, Jamaican immigrant, no education, they put him into the military, uh, give him the education, and at the end, he becomes a general with a high education. They take you uh, from zero. As long as you are willing to follow the discipline of the military, they can train you and even he has, you can have even a PhD and so on and so forth. You, the person who had nothing, nothing, nothing in the brain, but that's the lie of the devil. You have something in the brain, but you just lack a discipline. But the Bible will teach you the discipline, teach you the self-confidence that you can do it. They take the, the, the principle from the Bible, even the recruiting of the, uh, the, in the US military, is Isaiah chapter six, I'm looking for a man. That was send, and the answer is here. And send me. So, as long as you are willing, that's why we are not looking for finished work. We are looking for raw material, and we are willing to train, equip. And God, good Jesus took fishermen, fishermen, tax collectors, sinners. He taught them, he discipled them, and see how they turned the world upside and uh, down. God is going to use your background. So he said, be proud of your background. That's what makes you unique. God does not want copycats. I preach on the authority of the believers on um, TBN uh, Presents because uh, Kenneth Hagee has uh, written the book on authority of the believers so that every preacher around the world has plagiarized. So people were thinking that I'm going to teach uh, exactly what can I want to teach what Kenneth Hagee taught on the authority of the believer. I did not preach anything of uh, Kenneth Hagee preach. I preach what the Lord told me on the authority of the believers. Some welcome, but you did not say this. Why should I say that? Was it the revelation that God gave me, or was the, that, that He gave to you, Kenneth Hagee? Am I Kenneth Hagee? I am Brother Jerry Malanda. I'm going to use the word word of God, by the way Jesus explained that to me, and I'm going to explain it with the scriptures to back it up. Because I am unique. I think differently. My spiritual mother, she watched uh, uh, the voice of healing, the, the, the olive tree of the triune God. She called me, she said, I've, in six years of ministry, I've never been explaining Trinity that way. Not even understanding even better Trinity. God will speak to you and he will show you the scripture. This is, this is these things are, is now, is too theologically taught. It's not a broken down in the way that the layman can understand. So break it down, Jerry, and teach it to my people the right way. When you go on the mountain with the Lord, like Moses, Moses went with a, a, a tablet of stones, hallelujah. <laughs> and the Lord engraved, he downloaded from the cloud of heaven. You also need to go and download from the cloud of heaven. And God is going to explain to you, this is how you teach it. And he's going to show you from the Bible because God never speaks outside of the word of God. And when you are going to present something, you're going to pack it up. I'm not saying that because I'm going to look clever, but this is it, this is it. The scripture backs it up. You are unique. And God knows where you came from. So celebrate your uniqueness. You have a unique fingerprint. The way you think is unique. And God loves it. May you never look down on yourself in Jesus' name. May you celebrate the uniqueness in you. So uh, that's what, uh, uh, so we took a, a lot of examples. Ryan Abanka, I will not mention uh, all the example of his preaching. Uh, John G. Lake, uh, uh, Wigglesworth, uh, uh, Paul Genodu, so, so many others. The list is exhaustive. But God does not just use uh, Hebrews. The, the same complex of inferiority that some of us have is the same complex of inferiority that the Gentiles of the West had towards the Jewish brethren. 
The Jews say we have the oracles. We are the one who received the, uh, the Old Testament. So you need to be intimidated by us. God said, nonsense. If they also start practicing righteousness, they are going to be accepted by me and they are going to pour out my spirit. So when Paul started to come and preach, he started to say to them, God can use you as well the Gentile. God can use you as well the Gentile. He can use you. It's not about the Jew. No, the, the Jews, they are special people. Yes, they are special. God told, uh, use them as a prototype of what it means to be a people of God. They were a prototype. But now it is mass production of Christians, of born believers. God just Jews. You have access to the same promise of Father Abraham, and God made sure that he circumcised Abraham. He gave those promises to Abraham before he was circumcised. So that the technicality is uh, there that the Gentiles also were blessed in Abraham because he was not uh, Abram. He was not even uh, circumcised yet. His name has not been changed so that the Gentiles can be included. Paul is trying now to expl explain to the Romans, so you need to understand this technicality. God made it so that you also can be part of Abraham's um, blessing. So don't feel inferior to the, uh, the Hebrew brethren. The same power that was working in the apostleship of uh, Paul, of Peter, towards the, 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 the Hebrew is also working in the apostleship of uh, Paul now towards the, the Gentiles. The miracle that God was doing through the Jews is also doing that for you, you foolish Galatians. Why are you intimidated by the brethren that are coming from uh, Jerusalem? The same thing, you foolish Africans, you foolish Asians, you foolish uh, Latin American. Why are you intimidated by the gospel that is coming from uh, America? Now it is not the gospel that is coming from, uh, from uh, Jerusalem anymore. It is the gospel that is coming from America, as though God only uses people in America. No, he uses anybody of any race. There's no male, no female female, no black, no white, no yellow, no brown, no red, no mixed race, no slave, no free, but one new man in Christ Jesus. So it is going to be foolishness if you look down on yourself. Because God does not look down on you. That's what Paul was trying to explain to those Gentiles. There's no more sentience. There's no more barbarian. The sentience were those that were from the called Jewish, uh, no, not Roman colonies that were far away from Rome. So they still could uh, speak um, uh, Romans or Latin, they could still speak of Latin, but uh, they were speaking with a strong accent. Just like you have people that speak English, but they are from uh, Asia, from uh, Africa. They speak English, not uh, the Queen's uh, English. They speak it with the, the heavy background of the local dialect. So they call them uh, Sintians. There's nothing new. What has been is what is, because uh, Rome was the, the center of the world in those days. So now it was called Rome. It was good, including the, the gospel. That's why in the book of Revelation, we have a problem with uh, the Nicholas, he's a deacon in Rome, but he has usurped the authority of the apostles because the apostles were in North Africa. In Alexander, uh, Alexandria in North Africa, when they fled from Jerusalem, they came to North Africa, all of them. Uh, but the capital of the world was Rome. So they started to look down, oh, do, do North Africa, that is nothing good. We are in Rome here, the capital of the world. So they usurped the authority of the apostles because they were in the capital of the world. And it is now the teaching of Rome that was prevailed. That's why the Catholic Church became the biggest and the dominant church because Rome was the center of the world. The same thing also, that's why the gospel that is coming from America has become the most dominant and the pollution of the financial manipulations also that came from America has also infiltrated the world, the spirit of greed and mammon behind the gospel. There's nothing new. It happened when Rome became the, the, the power of the, the capital of the world. The same thing also is happening when America has become the, num the, the economical power of the world. And he's going to shift when another country is going to become the economical capital of the world as well. Because that's how we think. Instead of going by the word of God, we go by our physical eyes and our complex of inferiority. So, God say, Paul said, there's no more sentence. Whether you speak, there's no more Greek and there's no more uh, Gentiles. So, the Greeks, 
they were the intellectuals, the, 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 those who invented the democracy, and so, the, so on and so forth. They had the, the, the ecclesia, the senate, and they thought that they were above all the other Europeans. They brought democracy. They brought philosophies. No, they're not better in Christ Jesus better than anyone else. So he's saying to the other Gentiles, though all of you are Gentiles, but there is no more also Greek also and uh, with the other Gentiles as well. And among also the other Gentiles, there is no more uh, Scythians and uh, barbarians. Now the barbarians were those that did not even speak Latin at all. They were further away from the colonies of, uh, the, of uh, Rome and uh, they were not even speaking uh, uh, Latin, and they were not having uh, the education, the how to eat with cutleries, like uh, they were still eating with the hands, like savages. That's why they call them barbarian or savage. Or say you don't, should not see people like that. Never. So even if they send you in Papua New Guinea. You see them only wearing initially some uh, some of the native clothes, with only skin to cover the the genitals. Don't see them as a savage people. See them as the creation of God, and not better than they are, because you come from allegedly civilized world. But we need to renew our mind if we want this gospel to be effective. The Scots have a problem of complex inferiority towards the English because they think that they speak with an accent. And the English, though they hear what the Scots are saying, they do as if they don't, don't hear the Scottish accent. They hear. So you have a problem between England and the Scotland. Scotland has a complex of inferiority. That's why we always try to fight because we are trying to prove something that we are contributing into this kingdom. You don't need to prove anything. You need to discover that you are accepted and your accent is beautiful. Your Scottish accent is beautiful. Your culture is beautiful. So the word of God, that's what it does. It gives you self-esteem. You see yourself the way God sees you. Because to be able to be effective in this for you need to know who you are in Christ. Like what you and say, no, I know who I am in Christ uh, Jesus. You may call me a barbarian. You may call me a savage. You may call me a thinking uh, without culture, without education, but I am accepted uh, in the beloved uh, Christ uh, Jesus. So truly the purpose of all these Bible studies before we delve into, in, uh, into healing is truly to change the disposition of our heart that we are going to have the right uh, disposition of the heart. That's the purpose of all of it. Because otherwise, uh, people are going to sit there and resentful, and they're going to receive nothing. Nothing. So God will use the people to flow uh, to you to, to communicate his power, number three. Holy Spirit is Lord in all our ministrations. So when we minister to people, the Holy Spirit is Lord. Uh, is Lord. It's not our friends. The Holy Spirit is not a tool. Like uh, some ministries are going to explain that it's actually a crane that God used uh, to, to move one car from here. The Holy Spirit is not a crane. It's not a tool. It's your, it's your Lord. So when Jesus ascended, he sent us back the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. And uh, he came into a mighty rushing wind in Acts chapter 2, which was prophetically performed in 2 Kings chapter when Elijah ascended and the mantle fell uh, for Elisha to pick it up. Elisha is a type of disciple. Elijah is a type of Christ. Elisha, Elijah means uh, he is uh, God or Jehovah, Elijah is Jehovah is God, Jehovah is, so one way shall be Elijah, Elijah, Jehovah is God, and Jesus Christ is God, he's, uh, Jehovah is our salvation, that's what Yeshua means, or Jesus, Jehovah is our salvation, so Jesus, as Elijah ascended, he did not die, he ascended, the same thing also, Jesus rose from the grave, he's not dead, he's alive, and he ascended, when he ascended, he left the ministry, sent back 
the ministry Bible says the spirit of Elijah rose up on Elisha, not the mantle of Elisha. You don't need to be carrying the shirts and the bed sheets of the people. You need to receive uh, the power from on high on the day of uh, Pentecost, like a rushing uh, mighty wind in the name of uh, Jesus. So the Holy Spirit is uh, likened to the wind. One of the comparisons that he blows where he desires. So you're not in control of the wind. Hallelujah. The wind is in control of itself. Or in this case, the Holy Spirit that is likened to the wind, he blows where he desires. So you follow him. If he tells you to ask the people to repent, you tell them to repent. So if it's not discussing God, if I ask them to repent, they are not going to give me money for transport. You know, I came here on foot. I don't want to go back <laughs> on the foot. So if I tell them to repent, well, the Holy Spirit will just keep quiet. You are going to preach encouragement and pray for them. Nothing will happen because uh, you are not, uh, you have been sent on an errand. You are not the boss. He is the boss. And what he says goes. When he tells you don't go anywhere, you don't go anywhere. When he says to you don't eat, you don't eat. Jesus said to in John chapter 20, verse 21, if you want to be mightily used by God, you need to make the Holy Spirit Lord of your life. He's the Lord of the harvest. Jesus says to, to Peter, listen, Peter, I've not ascended yet. I'm going to ascend, ascend with the Holy Ghost. But this is it. When you were young, okay, you tied your own belt around your waist. You went wherever you want. So you had your own personal truth, your own personal inter private interpretation. The belt is the belt of truth. And to gird your loins uh, uh, is, uh, means to be ready to take action. So you had your own personal truth, your own private interpretation of what the kingdom of God was supposed to be. You were thinking that it was supposed to be even an earthly kingdom. When I was talking about the heavenly kingdom. So you had your own private interpretation. That's why when you were now disappointed that I was not establishing the physical kingdom, that's when now uh, you left and you, you denied me three times. So you tied your own belt, your own personal truth. You took your own actions, went wherever you went. You wanted to go. But when you are going to be old, in other words, when you mature in the faith, you are going to stretch forth your hand now. You are going to surrender. Not my will anymore but your will be done. And you are going to allow another to tie your belt, even the Holy Spirit is going to tie your belt, give you new truth, even the truth of the Holy Scripture, not your own private interpretation of it. And then it's going to lead you by the hand and lead you where you don't want to go. Because it is no longer you that leave. Christ is now living through you by the power of the Holy Ghost. So he gives you now orders. Wake up. I want to go to Bithynia. He said, don't. I want to go to Asia. Don't. But God, you said going to all the worst. I know I'm the one who wrote it. I know. But don't. I am Lord. And then he will show you a vision. The man of, the, of Macedonia. Come and help us. So you wake up. He okay. I need to go to Macedonia. I've been sent to Macedonia. So your job now, think of it as a sail. You host. When you are in the lake, you can use your own... Uh, a rowboat, and then you row, you row, you row, because you're in a lake, a small lake, a small pond. But when you are in the ocean, you, the ocean talks about the nation, you want to impact the nations. Hallelujah. If you start rowing, well, you're going nowhere. You're going to be tired and exhausted. What you need to do when you are to see, if you want to impact the nations, you need to stop having your own private interpretation. You need to yield to the Holy Ghost. Your job is now to just hoist the sail and wait for the wind to be ready to move and wait for the wind now to blow on that sail. And as it blows, now you go where the ship, the wind is carrying you in the name of uh, there will be some direction on your part, but the main thing that is the main force that is driving is that of the wind. It takes over. And if we want to impact the nations, it is no longer our will, no longer our private interpretations of the word, but uh, the Holy Spirit takes over. He blows into that our sails. Jesus, be the center, like the song says. It says that it goes on to say, be the wind in the sail as you blow. And my job is to hoist. 
that say and you blow in Jesus' name. You don't want our own problem. What to do is water it to the people. And when it comes to the Holy Ghost, he will convict of sin. He will convict of righteousness and he will convict of judgment. These are the three things that the Holy Spirit does. So if your Holy Spirit hallelujah, is not convincing, convicting the people of those three things, well, check again your Holy Spirit. All the prophecies from Genesis to uh, Revelation, those three elements are the conviction of sin, not condemnation, conviction of sin so that people can change and repent and be born again, conviction of righteousness to uh, give people the, the assurance that they are doing what is right, they are in the right direction, they are in the right standing with God when they've repented and they are doing the right thing. And then of judgment, those that are defiantly disobeying God, they are not going to escape the judgment of God. You need to tell them that uh, in the name of uh, Jesus. So uh, that's what God wants to do in the name of uh, Jesus. And uh, like I said, in Acts chapter 13, verse 1 to verse 4, the Holy Spirit is the one who ordained Paul into the apostleship. They prayed and then the Holy Spirit ordained them and sent them away. Not Jesus, not God the Father. The Holy Spirit is Lord of this harvest. So he said to them, then go. This, so they sailed to Cyprus now. After they've prayed for them with fasting, they went. the Holy Spirit is now the one leading us in the name of uh, Jesus. So everywhere you go and preach, ask the Holy Spirit what you're supposed to preach. Don't think, I've already given the example of Asia and Bithynia. That was in Acts chapter 16 from 6 to 10. They obeyed. They went where the Holy Spirit sent them, not where they wanted to go. So you may receive many invitations, but you don't go. You need to ask the Holy Spirit, should I go? Don't be like Jonah that buys his own ticket and goes where he wants to go. The Holy Spirit becomes in charge of our life. I want to marry someone, ask the Lord. God, she's a Christian, he's a Christian. I say, yes. You already said that the person needs to be born again. Yes, I say that. So what's the problem, God? Well, for what I've called you to do, do that person is born again, he or she is not going to be able to handle what I'm asking you to do. So, and I don't want you to be divorcing. I can't. So that's why, okay. So though he said uh, the, the, the person needs to be born again and so on, so even if you've met the person that is born again, ask him again. There are more than 2 billion born again believers. Ask him again, is this born again believer, the born of my born, the flesh of my flesh? Yes or no? He's the Lord of our life now. And if we want to be greatly used, we are going to trust him. We are going to hoist our sail, like in Acts chapter 17, verse 16, and the wind will blow. Even the wind of the Holy Spirit. And he will drive this uh, uh, sail in the, this, uh, yes, this sail in the name of Jesus. And we are going to be able to affect millions. Hallelujah. When Peter launched out into the deep, he could catch a lot of fish. In Revelation chapter 17 as well, the sea, they talk about uh, nations. So if you want to uh, affect the nation, tongues and so on and so forth, we need to be led by the Spirit. And it, it is uh, what he says that goes, not what we say that, uh, that go, but what he says uh, is what goes uh, in the name of Jesus. He's be he becomes a Lord over our lives. David always inquired of the Lord, always inquired of the Lord. And two times he did not inquire of the Lord. It was uh, with that incident um, uh, of Bathsheba uh, and also when he did the numbering of the people. But even when he faced the same situation, the same enemy that came to him, the Syrians in uh, first Samuel chapter, second Samuel chapter 5, he inquired of the Lord and God revealed to him, okay, do this. Even at Ziglag, after 
his uh, children and wives were captured and that the children and wives of his uh, soldiers as well. He wept with all his tears and then he inquired of the Lord. You will need to learn to inquire of the Lord for every aspect of your life. Don't just make him a Lord of your life. It won't work. You need to make him a Lord of your life. God, I just want you to talk to me when it my healing. Don't talk to me about my personal life. Don't talk to me about my marriage. Don't talk to me about my finances. He becomes a Lord of your life. The Holy Spirit came, came to me and said to me, Jerry, okay, I want to make a deal with you. I said, yes, Lord. Uh, he said to me, okay, you see, uh, I want to bring money into your hands. I said, yes, Lord. But everything that, that I bring into your hands uh, from this channel, for a particular channel, because when you are going to preach, they are going to give you now money. And the time has come. When they are going to preach, they are going to give you money. But it's my money. <laughs> I said, yes, Lord. So every money that they give you when they when you preach, you give me 60%. <laughs> you keep 40%. I say, yes, Lord. And then someone gave me a thousand pounds. So he said that the day before, and then in the morning, someone gave me a thousand pounds. I said, Amen. We, he already spoke because he knows. So I, I said, okay. So 60% I removed 600 pounds. I said, what do you want me to give it? He said, okay, it's the anniversary, the birthday anniversary of one of my servants. I want you to give him the 60, uh, <laughs> the 60, the 60, uh, 600, the 60%. So I wrote, uh, uh, I did not know it's a bank account, but I knew the bank account of someone else that knows him, that I trust. I say, okay, I send the money to, to him immediately because it's not my money, it's God's money. And then I was left with 400. I said, hallelujah, praise the Lord. He said, well, let's talk about those 400. I said, God, you said I should keep 40%. No, I said, no, let's talk about those 400. I said, okay. So those 400, you know, there is the, some, some uh, the thing that you were saying that we should, you should be going with the, with, um, <laughs> with the church. Well, this is the money for the boss. <laughs> I said, God, come on. I said, well, not my will. So I said, okay, let me send it already to Sister Lydia to pay for that boss so that, because if I, I keep it, I will be tempted to eat. So I was left with basically zero. But it is his uh, money. I said, now that you obey, now we will do another thing next time. I said, amen. It is Lord in every aspect of your life. And then he could woke me up on Sunday. He said, Jerry, I said, amen, amen. Yes, Lord. So, well, you are going to church? You know the church that is downstairs? I said, yes, they redeemed the church, yes. Well, I want you to pay for the, the rent for, for, the, for, the, for, the, for the church. I said, oh, oh, oh. I said, God, I don't have the money. Uh, you, the one that you gave me, <laughs> I've given that all over. He said, don't worry. The money is asked coming to someone has deposited money into your account. And he knows what is in your account. So I woke up that Sunday at uh, 6 a.m. I, 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 I dialed my HSBC account. Do you hear the balance? And the said, was to come. Had to come. I said, okay, no problem. So I went to the ATM. I took the cash for the, the rent because I know the price of the rent for that uh, uh, big hole. So I pay, I, I put it in an envelope and I put to our beloved pastor with love from Jesus. I packed it. So on Sunday, I was waiting for that pastor outside. So when he came late, so I said, so when he came, I said, from Jesus, I gave it to him. And I went and I started my service. He becomes the Lord of your life completely. So he speaks to you. So if, you, if your life is only God speaks to me only about the healing, it does not work. He wants to be your partner. He wants to be your friend. He wants he want to be involved in every aspect of your life in the name of Jesus. In every aspect of your life.
So he's Lord in all your administrations. He is a Lord. He is a Lord. He is Lord. So let the wind blow. Push your head the wind blow in the name of Jesus. And everything is going to be well in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So we are going to stop here at uh, four. Uh, if someone can... Uh, <clears throat> All right, that is page 20. It's uh, the purpose of a sign and uh, wonders. The purpose of signs and uh, wonders. He's going to speak to people. He's going to confirm his words with signs and wonders, but in every aspect of your administration not just in the healing let the holy spirit be the one now guiding you in jesus precious name but because it is not just our prayer our prayer points as well he has a prayer point Uh, and God finds someone that is obedient. He comes now that I, I, I know I'm the reason I'm not afraid because I remember he spoke to Idaosa. Idaosa in those days only had um, uh, 20 pounds, dollars. He said, Idaosa, forever that I gave you, that I give you full ministration. Uh, for every twenty dollars, you need fifteen, and you keep five. For every twenty dollars, you give me fifteen dollars, and uh, you keep five dollars. At the uh, uh, late uh, seven, and uh, by God's grace, he had twenty. He really had twenty pounds in his uh, twenty dollars. He didn't even. He immediately went and took fifteen dollars. He gave it. Uh, what the Lord. He said, God has spoken, but that's the new covenant now that I have with God. Work is going to grow bigger and bigger. And God wants uh, money to go through my head so that I can sponsor. But before Idaosa died, he had personally given away 67 million pounds. God just uh, made money to pass through him so that he can uh, build. Uh, churches uh, in the name uh, of uh, Jesus. If you are a dumb, God can't bless you. He said to Abraham, I'm going to pay so that you can become a source of uh, blessing. So he bought other church, he built churches, he bought churches for his pastors, he bought cars for his pastors so that they can do ministry without even having a headache uh, in the name of uh, Jesus, my spiritual father, for instance, he pays the mortgage. Sometimes I visit. Sometimes his pastors they fall into debts of uh, fifty thousand, and they are all about to be evicted, and he pays off the debts of uh, fifty. You don't become a spy in the law. You also need to dig your hand in your pocket, but for that you also need to be blessed. So he did his part. And God has blessed him so that he can become a, a real father, not just a spiritual father, but even a physical father to come and bail at the brethren from financial crisis. Because after healing, the truth is, in fact, healing is not the third problem in the church. The first problem in the church is financial problem. The first reason for divorce between Christian and even between pagan is uh, finances. It's not even an unfaithfulness. So it solves a lot. It's not the answer to every problem, but it solves a lot of problems in the lives of the people. The children need to go to school. They need to, to pay the rent. Otherwise, they are going to be evicted. We need to send missionaries. We need to do crusades. By uh, renting the stadiums is about uh, Glasgow State.
to pass in 2000 in order to hunt down stadium. And if God is already showing us that stadiums are going to be rented, uh, the Wembley Stadium is uh, half a million in 2010 when uh, they ran for the uh, National Day of Prayer. Uh, that's what the 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 year that they gave them pounds. So the gospel is afraid, but when you when you see the visions of God, Hallelujah, and you sit down, you realize, Oh God, you gave me the vision, Hallelujah. But what about the, the money? You realize that there is a financial uh, uh, burden also that comes with uh, the ministry in the name of Jesus. But God is going to speak now in every aspect of life. The Holy Spirit becomes the Lord of SS of fun. We just hoist the sail and then you Holy Ghost blow on the sail of the SS of fun and lead us into our destination in Jesus. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, say the Lord. As you yourself have been witness, of what the Lord has even been doing financially for the house of prayer of all nations. There is no pressure on anybody but on God and God alone. And the Lord has been taking us from glory to glory. What uh, we could not do with our little means, God has done it, has opened doors, given us favor in the name of Jesus. So that's how we work, the disposition of our heart. We need to make him Lord of our life. Which is not just about, I just want the healing. Don't talk to me about my sin. Don't talk to me about me changing. Yeah. <laughs> just talk to me about healing. It won't work. He wants to talk, address every aspect uh, of your life. And if we don't have at the right disposition to receive correction, receive uh, work. And, uh, to read here and they miss the deliverance. The people don't want to go and uh, the say it in Jesus' name. So, is there any question? So that now and next time I'm going to now to start uh, going for the practicality now of uh, healing, seeing uh, one by one for the next. Uh, uh, 20 videos or 100 something pages, one by one, the technicality of uh, divine healing, but especially we are working on our heart. Sister Lulu, do you have a question? No, thank you. Thank you. Sister Harriet, do you have a question? Yes, I just wanted to ask. Sometimes you 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 want to do something, and you pray and you pray, asking God, should I do it or not? Should I do it or not? And you don't hear, you don't get any answer. You end up doing it anyway. Okay. As long as what you are doing. That's why when God has not spoken, he has already spoken, like I say, when God has not spoken, he has already spoken. You need to believe. There's one thing that you need to believe yeah, is what uh, David said and what Jesus said in the book of Hebrews chapter 2 of Jesus. Uh, Lo, I come in the volume of the book and it is written of me, O Lord, to do your will. You need to believe that your whole life is written in the Bible. There's nothing in you under the sun that everything that God is or the Holy Spirit is telling you, you already said it in the Bible. And as you, that's why we wake up every day, we pray and we read our Bible so that we can also receive instruction and confirmation of what actions we are supposed to take during the day. And if what we are asking God to do is uh, not violating the word of God, and God does not speak to us audibly, in the Bible study of divine guidance, we have explained 
the way that God speaks us, sometimes we have the peace in our heart. So when we, we know that what we are doing is in line with the word of God and have the peace in it, then I do it. And I know it is uh, the will of God. Because if, when I wanted to do or do it, I had the peace in my heart. I went and did it, there is not a problem. If something that is uh, uh, not valid, uh, the issue of uh, a great issue in the, in the Bible, the Bible says do this, so I do it. I have peace in my heart, I'm supposed to do it. I'm, there are some prayers we don't even pray. Oh, oh God, should I give uh, five pounds to this person to, buy, to pay uh, uh, the transport? God says, you have those five pounds. So, and they don't have, and you know how far they are going. But there's no need to, to wait for the Holy Spirit. That one is in the power of your hand to do good. So like I said, people have a budget, 10% to God, 10% in your savings, uh, the uh, offerings and homes must not exceed uh, uh, 10 altogether. So you already have a budget for that. So if it is within your budget or in the power, when the Bible says if it is in the power of your hand, within your budget to do it, then you do it in the mighty name of uh, Jesus. So, those kind of things, basic things, we have uh, the guidance of the counsel of uh, the Holy Scriptures. That's what we study. Lots of messages in the church will stop, like uh, we've explained in the gift of the Spirit. The Lord is saying that you should stop uh, uh, drinking. Uh, uh, he does not like it when you drink alcohol and you become drunk. Sha-da-da-da. The Lord does says the Lord, you should stop smoking. If people read the Bible in that church and were properly taught on holiness, on presenting the bodies as a living water, God will not have to waste his uh, breath to have the service with a tongue to give such a basic uh, message. That's why Paul say, what do are tongues? Tongues are going to cease, those kind of tongues, because people are going to discover the word of God, and I don't need to make all that noise and all that the theater in the drama in the church. I will just come and say, you know, brother, holiness requires of us not just to present our spirit, but also our bodies as a living sacrifice. And you show them wrong. Uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. You show them Hebrews chapter 12, verse 4. You show them uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 9, and 10. You show them uh, uh, all the other scriptures. You say, okay, you see, that's why we want you to stop sinning against the body. First, show them 1 Corinthians. You cannot be destroying the temple of God. Your body is not the temple of the Holy Ghost. You cannot be a reveler anymore. You you open uh, in uh, Peter, you tell them, okay, you see people, uh, once upon a time we were going in the flood of dissipation of drunkenness uh, and the uh, revelry, the party, clubbing, going to casinos. Uh, but uh, people now find it strange that we Christians no longer go to the flood of dissipation. So how can you be a Christian and you are still going to that same flood of dissipation? Last Saturday you were in a, a nine club, the other Saturday you were in a, a party, you were smoking, Sisha, you were a Christian. We no longer do those things. Peter told us the revelers have no place in the kingdom. So are you born again or you are a fake? So those kind of basic messages are going to fail because God expects us to study, to show ourselves approved of God. So we now know what God expects of us. Just like when you have a children, you have trained your children. That's why Bible says that that's why discipleship is a training. Train up a child in the way he should go. So the child now knows what the parents likes and what the parent dislikes, what the parent approves of and what the parent does not approve of. So the parent does not need to be there 24-7. The parent doesn't need to, to teach 24-7. Before when the child is small, you need to be watching the child because he has a tendency of doing, doing he looks at you and if you are watching and then she, you will do what you don't like. In the beginning, you are going to have a little cane. You say, don't do that. And then he looks at you left and right. 
and you are not watching, you want to, to misbehave, you just do it again, and then you'll be still. And then with time, as it matures, you no longer need to be monitoring you 24 seven and be saying, don't, 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 don't. You don't need to do that anymore. He knows what are your values. He knows what are the values of the parent because they've been trained what the parent uh, like. And uh, it's going to be a wonderful relationship between the parent and the children because the children will not do things that will upset the parents. They know what the parent like and the parent don't need to repeat it again and again. Because they've dwelt together now. They've come to know the heart of the parents. They will be shouting in the beginning. You say, no, you don't shout at your parents. It is a, a dishonor and disrespect. Like I see some children shouting at the parents. Say, no, no, no. Uh, Christian children, I say, no, you cannot shout at your children, at your parents. The same thing also with us Christians. Sometimes we come and shout at God. The way sometimes uh, in some Pentecostal church we are praying as if God was our errand boy. There is no, and many times God will say to me, do you speak like that to your parents? And when I will be angry uh, and desperate, I'll be shouting in my prayer and <laughs> being irreverential towards God. And God was saying in Malachi all the time, your word have hurt me, your word, your words have hurt me. He said, what way have we spoken uh, uh, wrong to you? He said to you, the way you are this, this and that. Whenever I was angry and I would uh, speak out of anger, I was saying the truth, but I was disrespectful in the tone of my voice. It was, I was not voicing, it was in my heart. You can pray for my heart. I pray most of the time in my heart, but I was irreverential. And God went and spoke to Sister Louise. I don't like uh, the way Jerry is uh, pray, uh, he's praying these days. I was going through things. Yeah, that's what was true, but it was not a reason to be disrespectful to God. And then he spoke to my younger brother. And okay, and I said, okay, okay, I will correct, I will correct. <laughs> we are just like children before God as well. So we will learn to know what he does not like. Moses, don't talk to me like that. I'd be better that I die. Don't talk to me like that. Did I give birth to those children? <laughs> it's too much for me. Kill me. Yes, in the beginning, okay, but most now you are grown up. You should not behave like that. Okay, and now I'm angry. I take the, 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 the rod and I strike the rod. I just told you to talk to me. Why do you, did you strike the rod? Then you are no longer going to enter. It is not just a prophetic action. It is also being irreverential. Moses was irreverential because you did not honor me. Not because uh, prophetically Christ is supposed to be stru uh, struck only once, uh, to be crucified once. Uh, yes, that was a prophetic action, but the physical one, because that was obvious to God, there was uh, an irreverence uh, action of uh, Moses. See, you did not hallow me before the people. You did not honor me before. You talked to me as if we, though we have, like we sing, as the dear Pentafor, he's our brother, even though he's a king, we should never forget he's a king. Even if uh, he, the king decided to be our friends, there's still a way we talk to our king that needs to be with reverence or fear, because he's after all consuming the fire. If we murmur all the time against God, God says, okay, that's it, I heard you enough. So let me now remember the spirit that is upon you and divided among 70 people. I'm tired of you always coming and murmuring that it is too much for me, it is too much for me, it is too much for me. The Holy Spirit did not come from above. He took it from the head of, uh, of Moses and divided it into 70 people. Since you always complain that it is too much for you, it is a burden to you, those people, it's better for you, for, you, for you to die. Okay, let me remove part of the, the power that I gave you and give it to others. Elijah, Elijah is saying it's better for me to die. Okay, the ministry also is over. Come home. Go find Elijah, anoint Elijah. It's done here. What are you doing here? Always murmuring and complaining. It's, 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 I can understand it when we were in our early beginnings of our faith. But after all those years of a walk together, you still continue to behave like that? Okay, that's enough. Your own word. You are ensnared by your own word. You say that your ministry is over, you prefer to die. Okay, come home then. Let me give this ministry to someone else. 
So we grow with God and there are some things no longer tolerate from us either. You can tolerate your, your, your child between uh, in his underwear, that's good, he's a child. But uh, as he matures, you're no longer going to tolerate him to be pulling in his uh, underwear. The same thing with us as well. The closer we get to him, he's now saying, this is the way I want to talk. If someone is always shouting at you, you don't want to talk to that person too much. If that person is always murmuring and complaining to you, you don't want to talk to that person too much. But when you come to a person, is that person also is always disobeying you, telling you that he never does what you, what you say. You are going to go to someone that uh, when you tell him something, he's going to do it. The same thing with our children. If you have a child, Child, that when you tell him something the good dad and he does it, you're going to be closer to that child. And the, the other one will become childless. Why are you always working with uh, uh, with Derek? But because Derek is obedient, full stop. Not that we love him more, but he kind of, uh, is a, he, he, when you tell him something, he does it. So the, our heart is kind of inclined towards him because we know he's not going to shout at us call us names because he's angry. He's going to respect us. Even when he's angry, he's going to respect us when he's going to talk back to us as we change also our behavior. God also now draw closer because he enjoys our fellowship. <laughs> it's a life with God. And he cannot hang out with us, talk with us about everything. He can make plans with us for his kingdom. Because he's no longer about us. He's now living his life through us. And we're in partnership with the Holy Spirit. It is a beautiful life. So when he hasn't spoken, he has already spoken in the Bible. That's what we study now. And basic prophecies are going to stop even the church. Now, when he's going to speak, it's going to be now uh, specific directions. Uh, I want you to go now to Bithynia to... to uh, to don't go to Virginia, go to, to Macedonia. When it came to sin, Paul wrote, he says, Stop it. I know I'm absent in the flesh, I'm present in the, the, the spirit. I've already judged. This is wrong. Stop. You're not going to inherit the kingdom. I don't need the prophecy. You are not going to inherit. So stop it. And that brother kicked him out of the church. But I've been sleeping with the father's wife, kick him out of the church. So I don't need the Holy Spirit in that case. So, brother, I'm Clear cut cases. Oh, the Lord said to me, one of the sisters said, the Lord said to me, I should marry this man. I said, is he born again? No, no, no. But the Lord, I said, the Lord did not say that to you. So I don't need to hear you. You just need to read the counsel of the Holy Spirit. No, the Lord, I had a vision. I said, that vision was from the devil. It was coming from your flesh. You were so desperate to, to be married. God will not change his word for you. The highest of all authority is the word of God. Pastor Jerry kind of officiated that wedding and said, I'm not officiating that wedding. I stand with God. When a push comes to shove, I stand with God. It doesn't, but even if a pope came down, like Martin Luther said, a layman that has the word of God is better than a pope that does not have the word of God. We stand with the word of God. My pastor said, the, the Baptist pastor said that it's, it's okay, it's okay. I said, let the Baptist pastor officially win. I am not. I would come like Jesus and eat at that wedding, but I'm not going to officiate at the wedding. Because I know where it is heading. Where is it heading? Heading. Disaster. God, you are going to be a lukewarm believer. So, there are some clear cut uh, direction. That's why we study the word of God. That's why Paul was saying to the Laodicean church after, to the, the, to, to the Colossian church, after you have read your letter, send it to the church of Laodicea. And you also receive the letter of Laodicea and read it because there's no private uh, revelation. What I say to you is I say, I say to all. That's what Jesus said in Mark chapter 14. The last verse, what I say to one, I say to all. It is the same teaching for everyone. That, so read all the letters that I have written to the other churches. Read also all the my weekly milk. So that uh, 
we don't need to repeat the same thing. For me, I have a special gift. I say, no lie. Me, I heard a special direction lines. We don't have a special. You, if you have a private interpretation, you will go with the perfect uh, seed of the word of God, the incorruptible seed of the word of God. I didn't come my private interpretation. That's the prophecy that will never fail. Yours is going to fail, and you are going to break your teeth and come back and crying. And we will pick up the pieces again. So, when God has not spoken, actually, He has already spoken. And now we are, but now, when this is something that is ambiguous, uh, He has not uh, given a clear cut direction, but He has given different examples. That's why also we study because He has given uh, three, four examples of a similar situation. That's when I will pray for direction. Which one should I do, my, my Lord? And then as we pray, it gives us peace concerning one particular direction. If, for instance, brethren are fighting you, should you fight back? But God doesn't want us initially to fight back. So act like uh, uh, Gideon uh, and don't fight back. Even give them the credit for peace's sake. Hallelujah. Amen. But sometimes when God, when the brethren are fighting you, God says you need to stand your ground. because. They want you to abdicate so that you can leave them and they will continue the, the, the nonsense. No, this, in this case, the kingdom is at stake. Advancing the kingdom is at stake. So, Jephthah fight back those Ephraimites because they think that uh, they are indispensable and uh, they now, now want to usurp my authority. So, fight, don't be like, uh, in this case, don't be like uh, uh, Gideon that uh, tried to appease them and... Uh, flatter the ego you don't have time to flatter the ego so fight back don't allow them to try to kill you so jesus came to die on the cross yes that was his sole purpose to die but to die on the cross so when they want to push him from the hill of the brow he said no i did not come to be to die uh, by falling off a cliff that's not what is written in the bible no i came to die so i'm not uh, doing that when they wanted to kill him at, Jer at jerusalem he hid but when the real time came, he went out to sheep for the slaughter to be crucified. So though he came to die, but when the devil wanted to kill him prematurely, he said, no, this is not the kind of death I'm going to die. Not of being stoned, not of being pushed off, off, off the, 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 the hill. No. But of being crucified. Yes, this one. Yes. Are we supposed to preach the gospel everywhere? Yes. But the same Jesus had to hide when he knew that people were trying to kill him. So, in those cases, God now gives us strategies how to preach the gospel. He said, now have the wisdom of a snake. One of the wisdoms of this, be harmless as those but wise as the snakes. The snake will hide for a long time. He will not make a noise. He will not announce his presence. And he will grow, 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 become strong. The day he will announce his presence is to strike and kill. So you also, sometimes you need a lot of discretion in the work of the ministry. Sit down for 10 years and write those Bible studies. Let nobody know about it. Write them in silence. And okay, uh, now record them in silence for about five years. We record them for about five years silent. You are hiding, you are hiding, you are hiding. That's the wisdom of the serpent because you don't have the strength yet. If you announce it, lots of people are going to discourage you, try to kill you. Are you supposed to announce on all the rooftop that uh, God has called you to do this? Yes, but now is not the time. Otherwise, uh, your brothers, like the brothers of Joseph, will try to kill that. Don't you are going to suffer for no reason if you tell them all the details of the vision. Out of jealousy and envy, they will try to kill you. They try they crucify Jesus because of envy. They sold Joseph to, uh, to slavery because of envy. So when you're not strong yet, don't open up your mouth and tell the vision until the time has come. When the time has come now, you can open your mouth. When now the time came, we could open our mouth. So where, when did you have time to write those 32 books? Uh, at least for 10 years. When did you have time to record those three hundred something uh, my weekly meeting that you have on your website on iPod, uh, I, I, 
uh, iTunes uh, everywhere, uh, Audible, Amazon. When did you have that time? Well, we were doing that in secret. Though God said to shout, not be ashamed of the gospel, but in that case, use the wisdom of the serpent until you are strong enough. Now it's too late. They can only discourage you and try to affect your faith because in your faith, you are already strong. So, in those specific cases now, what is not a clear cut direction, we inquire of the Lord. Should I pursue? That's what they will always inquire of the Lord. It is a relationship. It is not, um, uh, people are looking for formula. The formula, okay. No, some things are straightforward, but many things God, the reason why God wants it so that we can have a relationship. Come and talk to me, my son. Come and talk to me, my daughter. And let me show you the way. Let me give you some wisdom. I will reveal my word to you, but you will study the word of God. You study the word of God, you will uh, read the word of God, you study it, and then you will meditate. And as you meditate, you are going to receive instruction. That's why the question that is not uh, equipped with the word of God is not going to be a strong believer because God would only speak in line with the word of God. And you'll be able to know that what you heard was from God or the feeling that you had was from God if you know the word of God. And that's why in the house of prayer we've done uh, uh, those Bible study to give people the shortcut so that they don't have to break the teeth, so that they don't have to, to regret it in the future. They can do things without making any, any mistake in life. We are supposed to go from glory to glory, from faith to faith, from victory to victory. Because God has already told us how to live our life. And as we inquire, then he tells us what, is our, what our options are in Jesus' name. Was it clear, Sister Howard? Yes, thank you. Uh, Kelvin, do you have any question or and all in? No, thanks. No, thanks, Jerry. It was great. Thanks. Okay. Uh, Papa Pia Mamado, do you have any question? It's frozen. Thank you. Uh, everything's clear. Okay. William, any question? No, thank you. Did I ask Lulu if she had a question? Yes, he did. I don't have one. Thank you. Let us pray. And so that next time we will now delve into just healing, healing, healing in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for today. Thank you for this wonderful sunny day. It did not start like that early in the morning, but now the sun is out. Father, we want to bless you and help us to enjoy some time in the park. Uh, not stay indoors, but actually enjoy the sunshine. And thank you for tomorrow as well. We give you all the glory and we give you all the praise. We thank you for those who have traveled in Kenya. We thank you for uh, everyone uh, in the House of Prayer for our nation for this time of the holy days. Let your name be glorified in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Thank you, thank you.